Hello and welcome back to another video. So today we're answering another one of your giveaway questions. So if you don't know, each month we run a giveaway that gives away one van build consultation with us. And within that giveaway, you get the chance to ask us any van build related question that we will then answer in a video. So today's question is, can you electrically cook in a camper van? We are about to answer this question right now through practical demonstration Ta -da. and obviously we're going to tell you how that's possible for you as well now but first if you fancy entering the uh, van build consultation giveaway then there's three things you need to do one subscribe to our youtube channel two comment below on this video what method do you use to cook in your van or what method you would fancy using in your van to cook and three and most importantly is fill the form in the description below so on today's menu is jacket potato cooked via an electric oven. So we have a couple of electric cooking appliances actually in the van. Uh, as I said, we've got an oven, which is the Ninja something or other. I'll leave a link down in the description below. I can't remember the exact wording of it, but we've got a Ninja electric oven. And we've also got some electric cooktops, electric induction hobs that we basically use to boil pasta and things like that on. And then we've also got a toaster. We've got a blender and we also have a waffle maker. Most important thing of them all, a waffle maker. <laughs> So obviously the answer to the question is yes, you can electrically cook in the van, but I think the more important question is how does that work and what does that mean for your batteries and how long can you last and things like that. So that's what we're more going to be going over today. Um, do you want garlic pepper, Polly? Yes. Good, because I just got garlic out, so I need garlic pepper. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. Do, do. I admit this is not a traditional way of cooking a jacket potato but a normal way takes an hour in the oven this takes 20 minutes and it tastes just as good so you know a jacket potato is just a baked potato so you know these are going to be baked chopped potatoes though so, um one tip sam you should cut really cut the potatoes the same size i sort of tried to sort of do that what then why did you cut these two in half see that's big and that's not so that that's going to cook really quickly and that's going to cook at least you know five minutes to slower yeah. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Right, so 3000 watt inverter on, oven tray. I don't think you've seen the oven before. Uh, they might have, I'm not sure. But anyway, mm. oven reveal if you haven't. Right, oven on, 25 minutes at 200 degrees. That seems about right. All right, and away we go. Good luck little potatoes. Whilst our jacket potato is cooking, I guess we can go over some of the numbers and the maths about how the electric cooking is uh, possible with our battery setup. Okay, so you may know that we have recently upgraded our battery capacity from 200 amp hours to 920 amp hours. Exactly. So it's a fairly large upgrade. Yes, and we also actually upgraded, we didn't do this on camera, but we also upgraded our inverter from 2000 watts to 3000 watts and that was mainly to run the oven because the oven takes 2400 watts by itself okay so at this point you may think okay well of course you can electrically cook <laughs> you are loaded um <laughs> with power here so uh yes um uh, we're gonna tell you how the upgrade has transformed the ease of electric cooking yeah but even before we upgraded even before we upgraded especially during the summer mm. because we travel for an entire summer on our 200 amp hours of lithium batteries without the oven but with the induction hobs mm. with the toaster with mm. the blender with the waffle maker we barely used get we do have a backup like gas kind of a camping grill kind of cooker that we use kind of as a backup or use outside if we want to cook outside yeah but, but even, we didn't really use that in the summer so even with the 200 amp hour battery bank we still actively cooked via electric and only occasionally use the gas stuff. And on some of our kind of heaviest electric cooking days where we may make toast in the morning and have an omelette and then we'll cook like some pasta and make a sauce mm. for lunch yeah. and then for dinner we'll have jacket potato or something that requires electric cooking again. We may have used about 
50-60% of our 200 amp power capacity. However, in the, in the summer, summer, because we've got 540 watts of solar on the roof, mm -hmm. we pretty much recharged everything that we essentially spent on yeah. electric cooking for the day. So in the summer, yeah. we were perfectly fine. Because electric cooking is not necessarily about can you do it? The answer is yes. It's you can do it, but how long can you do it for? So how good is your recharge capacity? Not how good are your batteries and your inverter? Because by this point, uh, our induction hobs only take uh, 800 watts maximum mm. and on low power, they're like 400 watts. Yeah. So it's pretty much no power at all. Nearly any battery setup and any inverter mm. can do it. It's how quickly you can recharge is the key. Because yeah. as soon as it started turning autumn, things went south. <laughs> so uh, basically our original setup was 200 amp hours of lithium uh, batteries yeah. with 540 watts of solar on the roof, uh, 50 amp DC charger to charge from the alternator and uh, as a backup charger we have 30 amp AC charger so we can plug in. Yeah. We did not use the AC charger, uh, well, we, we honestly haven't used the AC charger that much at all anyway because no. um, it's always just a backup um, uh, but the DC charger got some heavy use <laughs> as the solar decreased. Yeah so there were times where we would electric cook in the day on that 200 amp hours then have to turn the engine on to charge our batteries back up mm -hmm. usually because we were parked in the middle of nowhere there's nowhere to plug our AC charger into so we would just turn the engine on. How many amp hours would a normal day how much would we use on a normal day on average? If we were to electric cook, kind of... Just normal leisure, so, yeah. so, so uh, toast, uh, like you said, uh, pasta or boil something, uh, and then do the same thing in the evening. Yeah, so. so we would use about 100 amp hours a day. So 100 amp hours a day out, so. out of uh, a 200 amp hour battery setup, right? Yeah. So that's 50% down in one day, and if you didn't recharge that back up that day, <laughs> then the next day, you won't be able to do the same because you cannot drop your batteries to zero. Yes. So, exactly. so, so, so obviously context. So like <laughs> you could do it, but you'll have to sacrifice something and then there'll be extra steps you have to take to maintain that um, uh, capacity essentially. So in, in the summer, that was not a problem whatsoever. It was, you know, joy, you can cook, you know, creative culinary flair all the time. And that was only due to the solar. As the solar got progressively worse and worse, we were basically constantly thinking about, okay, where do we have to be? Yeah. Um, are we going to move now? Or where are we going to charge? Do we have to drive? Do we have to turn the engine on? And I think um, also uh, our... <laughs> can we have toast this morning? And yeah, you, I was going to say... You, our... you check the power. Our cooking kind of... Our, our cooking methods changed yeah. because we're like, okay, let's not cook lunch, let's just have salad or something that doesn't need cooking because we're going to run out of power and we don't want to have to turn the engine on or drive or whatever. And so, I think it's very key to point out that the um, uh, amount of time we ate healthy decreased with the sun. The more complicated cooking got or the more thinking steps there had to be in order to actually cook something, um, uh, the less we actually cooked because it became harder to make the decision to. As we approached December and uh, we had to make some decisions, um, that's Especially why... as we knew we were coming out yeah. to do van life in the winter, yeah. even in slightly warmer countries where the sun was still not going to be as good, mm -hmm. we had to make a decision, what are we going to do? Yeah. Either we replace our cooking appliances with pure gas mm -hmm. or we get more battery power. Gas was not an option for us. Um, therefore, th therefore, <laughs> it was a more sustainable future option, which was get more batteries. Yeah. So the two um, things that we upgraded mm -hmm. were the battery capacity, as we said, from 200 mm -hmm. to 920 amp hours. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there'll be a little link in the description to Roma, which is where we bought the batteries from. And perfectly on time, our jacket potato is cooked. Oh, and speaking of links, we have now released our electrical wiring schematics, which depict how we have done our wiring. So um, that's a very po popular request. So if you were looking for that, that is now live and there's an early bird discount of 50% off uh, for the first week. So that the price is going up uh, sharpish. So if you are looking to get it and you want a discount on it, it is now live. So that is also in the now displayed here on the screen and in the description. <laughs> and potato time. Right, 
Now, tell me, is this a uh, potato with tuna or tuna with potato? Tuna with potato. <laughs> I like my topping. <laughs> tell me, is yours a swimming pool for beans or a swimming pool for potatoes? So, yes, as I was saying, we've now got 920 amp hours of lithium battery power and we upgraded our inverter from 2000 watts up to 3000 watts, mostly so that we could run the oven or so we can run the oven and an induction hob at the same time, because uh, that's Be getting pretty close to the limit. Basically, the upgrade uh, that we did has made cooking in a van normal yes the way so, the way the way you would expect for it to be in a you know a fixed house connected to the mains yeah so toast in the morning instead of it taking five percent of our battery power now takes just above one percent and like if we want to cook pasta on our 200 amp hour setup mm -hmm. it would have cost us about 15 percent of our battery power now it barely costs us five percent mm -hmm. and actually uh this jacket potato now let me just check we ran that 2,400 watt oven for 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't run 2,400 watts all the time, but it took, we went from 83% battery to 78, so 5%. Mm -hmm. To cook jacket potatoes or baked potatoes <laughs> with uh, whatever. Yes. And I will say that the biggest change of life that's come with the battery upgrade, very nice cutlery skills, is the fact that the oven makes it so that I'm hungry, I just want to stick this in. Stick it in, set the timer, and you don't have to cook anything. It's just, it's doing itself. Well, so, yeah, you don't have to like get anything out, replug something, or no. like you still have to do that with the blender and the waffle maker but because they don't have their own spot in the van. But at the same time, it's, um, uh, you know, we don't use them that often. Well, it's mm. just baking something, just putting it in. Yeah. It's really mm. easy. And the induction hobs, which just need to open the drawer and take them out and plug it in. It's not like you have to rearrange something. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just, it's all about how easy things mm -hmm. are. How many extra steps do you have to take to actually achieve what you're going for? If you're new here and you don't know, we live in the van full time at the moment. Uh, we are here the whole time um, uh, so our healthy eating our habits everything is kind of dependent on how functional the space is yeah. and how attuned it is to our needs and the way we do stuff and how we adapt to it yeah, yeah. so the real question is um, uh, is it truly necessary to have as much power as we have stuffed in this, into this van to electrically cook no no. You can achieve it, uh, like I said, you can achieve it with 200 amp hours. And if you're only going for summer trips and you know it's going to be sunny, yeah. you sort it. You don't need to load yourself anymore. So I would say, as a good comparison, if you electrically cook in the van, 200 amp hours of lithium is enough capacity for the summer. 400 amp hours is good enough for spring, summer and autumn. And then if you wanted to do it in the winter as well, like we are fully off grid, maybe 600 amp hours of lithium is what you would be needing for at least a couple of days off grid where you don't have to worry about the power being used. Yeah, and then this is all dependent on your habits, by the way. Um, if you don't like to cook as much as we do, or if you cook certain type of meals that don't need an oven, mm -hmm. then, you know, you can significantly reduce that um, uh, amount. It's just about balancing, like knowing your habits, knowing your needs, and then you pick what you what works best for you mm -hmm. so and also we picked the, this bigger battery bank not because we really need that right now but because we don't really want to have to buy new batteries again yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's future proofing it um mm -hmm. uh, and it is a bit excessive but it does give us a week of basically off grid time which is excellent so yes it is totally possible to electric cook in a camper van and if you did want to know how to wire it up there'll be a 50 percent early bird discount so there'll be a link to our electrical schematics which shows you how to do that if that's something you are interested in so there will be a link in the description below and the 50 percent is only for the first week and that is of the release of this video so make sure that you pick that up if you are waiting for it so now i'm gonna eat my potato me too it's gonna get cold Oh, is it? Just warm enough. <laughs> <laughs> yabba, yabba, yabba. Someone's going to have to get up there and turn that camera off. I'm trapped by a table. Could you do it? No, I'm trapped by a table. I pointed at them, not you. Try. Just, just, just. <laughs> hey, no, you did it. 